Well, hello, God bless you. Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here. And I want to begin by saying to every one of you, Happy New Year. What a year this has been. 2021 has been one for the record books. And I, I, I believe that all of you would agree with me. And uh, I tell you, God has been good to us and the Lord has been faithful. This year has been the year that God declared with the theme that the Lord gave me for 2021. He called us to be worshiping servants. Take it from Matthew's gospel, chapter number four and verse 10, where the Lord said to Satan, get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, thou shall worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thou serve. Thou shall love the Lord, adore the Lord, lick the hand of the Lord, if you will. Be like a, a, a dog excited to see its owner at the end of the day when the owner comes home from work and the, dad, the dog runs up to it and wagging its tail just so excited that its owner, its master has arrived. Worship. This was the year that we're called to just love God in, in, in such a manner. And then him only shall thou serve. The word serve had to do with the liturgical work of the church, the, uh, the, the, the met, uh, where the metal meets the road work of the church, witnessing, praying, opening the church, keeping the church doors opening, attending church, doing the actual work of the Lord, uh, and uh, the, the, the Levitical work, the work that we do, the attending of revivals and conferences and different things like that. And when the Lord gave me this theme, I had no idea that uh, in, during this year, churches would be closed. In many states, churches placed on the non-essential list. And sad to say, many churches and pastors and bishops and leaders went along with that designation without even putting up a fight. And in the name of safety and under the motivation of fear for their lives, agreed with ungodly politicians who some meant well, but they failed to understand the importance of the house of God. They failed to understand that if there's any house in society that should be left open, it's God's house. We left the ABC stores open in our state. Uh, the vape stores never closed in the state of North Carolina. The big box stores did not close. The grocery stores did not close. These things were deemed essential, but the house of God was deemed non-essential. And yes, for seven weeks, we here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ had to uh, adhere to the edict of our governor, Governor Roy Cooper. And for seven weeks, our church was closed. We still came, we still broadcast, I still preached from the church, but we preached of uh, two empty pews for the saints could not attend service. But lo, seven weeks later, our God whom we served, oh my, Righteousness prevailed, godliness prevailed, and our governor was overturned. And the very next day, you've heard this story before, after I got that call on a Saturday afternoon, that righteousness had prevailed. I made a couple of, of calls, and lo and behold, we went into church. We entered into the upper room the very next day, and we have just celebrated week 84 of live services. And I give the praise to the God of the Bible for watching over us and keeping us low these 85 weeks as we have entered into the house of the Lord. Uh, 8 a.m. service on Sunday morning and an 11 a.m. service on Sunday morning, and then uh, our Bible study on Thursday nights, and just so many things God blessed us to do. And here we are today speaking to you live and well and kept by the power of God. And I have to say this, not only has God been faithful, my friends, but you've been faithful. 
Many of you did not allow me to attend one service alone. Our church mothers, I have deemed them the heroines of our church. Oh, these seniors who came in praising the Lord with their hands lifted high, shouting glory to God. Amen. As we entered back into the house of God, God has blessed us for 84 uh, weeks to, to worship. And not one of those services have the mothers not been represented in great numbers. And you know what? By the grace of God. We have not lost one of them to this pandemic. To God be the glory for the wonderful things that he has done. He has watched over us. As I said before, my friends, the virus is in the world. We live in the world. And yes, uh, there have been members of the church who have uh, uh, contracted the virus, but by the faithfulness of God, the Lord has healed and the Lord has delivered and the Lord has set free. God in his goodness took two of our members home. I'm just grateful that the cause of their uh, uh, contracting COVID was not due to any negligence or any outbreak or anything here. But God took two. I don't use the word just two. I don't use the word only two. For these were two mighty saints of God who are now around the throne and serving Jesus Christ. And they, they've joined the great cloud of witnesses. And they're there cheering us on, saying, carry on, carry on. Soon we'll meet again. And my friends, I say soon one morning, oh, soon one morning, I'm going to lay down my cross and get my crown. Soon one morning, I'm going home to be with the Lord. And I'm telling you, I look forward to it. And I know that you do too. But until God calls us home, we're going to serve him. Amen. And we're going to lift him up and we're going to give the God of the Bible all that we have. But back to your faithfulness. Thank you for how you have stood by this ministry. Thank you for every prayer that you have prayed. And I know that you've been praying. And I'm speaking to the, to, the, to the members who are near and far. I'm speaking to people who have gathered in the sanctuary with me. And I'm speaking to people whom I have never met. They've never darkened the door of this church. But you have gotten down on your knees. You have lifted your hands. You have called up heaven on the behalf of yours truly and the upper room church of God in Christ. And I want you to know because of you, because of your prayers, because of your consistency, because of your belief, you're joining us in this quest to simply obey Hebrews 10 and 25, to not forsake the assemblings of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but gather so much the more as we see that day approaching, because of your prayers, God has enabled this preacher. God has enabled this man of God to, to stand to, and to withstand uh, during this evil time of attack, during this pandemic, because of your prayers and your faithfulness. Oh my, God has been good. And I sit here today uh, speaking to you with all sincerity, saying to you, thank you. Thank you for praying for us. Thank you for partnering with us. You know, during this pandemic, many of you have joined the upper room. You are our long distance members, but you are members nonetheless. And I want to thank you for your support. Not only have you been praying for us, not only have you been lifting us up in prayer, not only have you posted things in support of the ministry, but you have sent in your hard earned tithe and offerings. You have sent dollars and cents. You have sent support to this ministry to keep us going. And I want to say to you, thank you so much for your support, for your prayers. And I will continue to labor to preach the unadulterated truth of God. God's word, amen, is true and God's word is right. And we will continue to preach the truth of God to you with power and authority with everything that I have in me. And I'm asking God everything that I'm lacking. And yes, yes, we have these treasures in earthen vessels and there are things that we lack. 
I'm asking God to supply uh, that and to enable me to deliver the word of the Lord. And I'm praying for you that God keep you and watch over you and yours for your faithfulness toward this ministry and for your willingness to stand for the truth of God and for Jesus Christ. Now, my friends, I'm coming to the end of this, but I want to say that we uh, launched our end of the year victory revival on last night. And I'm still rejoicing uh, off of the word of God and the prayer. The prayer started at 730 and God met us in the prayer. Praise and worship. The praise team sing the wonderful songs of Zion. And then the elder Alvin Geiger gave us a powerful word from the Lord. And he told us to look up for victory. And then our main speaker, Evangelist Crystal Amanchukwu, delivered the word of God with power and authority and declared that we're going to another place. And I believe it. I believe that in 2022, should the Lord delay his coming and he allow us to live, I believe that we ought to change our posture, look up and expect victory and watch God take us from one faith level to the, to the next. Watch the God of the Bible take us to another place. Whatever Satan pre presents, he can't present anything that's more powerful than what the God of the Bible has already done. And he has prepared us and is preparing us for what ever lie ahead, whatever variant may come, whatever may come, God's in it and he's going, he's watching out for us. Now tonight, another wonderful woman of God, member of our, of our church, the, the evangelist missionary Shekinah Hurst will be our early speaker. She's a preacher. And God's going to use her in mighty ways. And our main uh, speaker will be our guest, our dear friend, Prophetess Janet Floyd. What a wo mighty woman of God she is, a mighty prophet of the Lord. She's already in the city, and we're expecting a mighty move of God from this mighty woman of God. And, and my friends, on Friday night, yours truly. On New Year's Eve, we will have two services. One will begin at 6, and the other, uh, it's on the screen, I think, at 9. Brother Gary, I want to make sure I get my times right. And uh, we will, yours truly, will be delivering the word of the Lord and giving the theme for 2022. We are practicing all of the safe practices that we have practiced. Anytime you've done anything for 84 weeks and it works, uh, I think that that says something about uh, uh, your readiness and preparedness. And so we invite you to come. We invite you to come. We are social distancing and we are having two services instead of the one. We will be praying for everyone present, but normally during the new year, I personally lay hands on everyone uh, present, but we're not going to personally lay hands, but I'm going to personally pray. And I believe that God is going to bless us nonetheless and, and, and anoint you for the coming year and anoint you for the theme. I want to tell you what it is, but I can't. I got to wait. I got to wait. I got to wait. The banner for the new year is here. The banner is being uh, lifted, but we're going to roll it up where you can't see it until the time. And so uh, we're excited about what God is, is doing. And as I close to my friends in the Texas area, I'm going to be uh, attending. I will be a part of the uh, Acts 6 and 4 conference in Texarkana, Texas at the Texarkana Convention Center. I'm going to be with the mighty man of God, Pastor Jason uh, Stidham, and I'm excited. I will be uh, preaching the January 5th, 10 a.m. service. If, if you're in the area and you can come, I'd love to see you. Join me at the Acts 6 and 4 conference there in Texarkana, Texas on January the 5th. Now we're having service tonight. Meet me tonight right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. My friends, God is going to bless us real good. And let me tell you, uh, Evangelist uh, uh, Hurst and Prophetess Janet Floyd are going to... 
preach and you will be here to say amen and get a blessing from the Lord as these mighty women of God go forth. I am expecting a move of God. We had a move of God last night. I'm telling you, I'm still a little, uh, I'm still a little drunk off of it. For I tell you, I was blessed and, and the house was blessed. The atmosphere was blessed and I'm grateful I'm grateful. Let me tell you, you're talking about some members. I'm grateful that with the, uh, the, the variant, the new variant, and everybody's talking about Omicron now, and uh, we heard about Delta and all, the, it's all real. I thank God. I tell you, the saints came out like it was Sunday morning. Thank you for your courage and your faith in the Lord. We're not tempting God to attend service during a pandemic. We're not tempting God. You know what we're doing? We're obeying God. For he was the one who said, forsake not the assemblies of yourselves together. And I hadn't looked, there's no asterisk beside Hebrews 10 and 25 that says, except in the case of a pandemic. And he said that my house shall be called the house of prayer for all men. It is the place of refuge. It is where we retreat to. During the world wars, during the, all of the wars that our, countries have been, our country has been in, the disasters, the natural disasters, and all the things that have taken place, we have not responded by closing the house of God. In times past, we responded just the opposite. When everything else was closed. I remember 9-11. I remember it like it was yesterday. When everything else closed down, people attended church. We didn't know what was going on. We didn't know what would happen the next day. But I tell you what we knew. We knew that if we prayed, God would intervene, and he did. So my friends, meet me tonight. I love you. Thank you again. Thank you for your support. Thank you to the members of the upper room. Thank you to our elders, our, our missionaries, our staff. Thank you to the first lady. My lovely wife, Pamela, thank you to the board of our church. Oh, God has given me a board of directors, a board of directors that are second to none. To our music ministry, thank you so much for your faithfulness and your hard work. And I want to thank God for my brother, my brother, Brother Gary Leach, yes, sir. who is the producer of this. Thank you, brother. This man does a tremendous job. We love each other. I enjoy working with him. He's a genius, and he has, is a tremendous blessing to this ministry. Thank you, sir, Thank you, Bishop. for all that you do. Thank you, Bishop. We'll see you tonight. God bless. Right here at the Upper Room, Church of God in Christ.